HR Basics is a series of short courses designed to highlight what you need to know about a particular human resource management topic. In today's HR Basics, we explore work-life effectiveness, defining what it is, why it matters, and how organizations achieve it. Work-life effectiveness is a specific set of organizational practices, policies, and programs, plus a philosophy that actively supports efforts to help employees achieve success both at work and home. In addition to constant change in the way that we do business, employees' personal lives continue to change and have become far more complex than ever before. Dramatic change in the world of work and in people's lives has accompanied us into the 21st century. The workforce doesn't look like it did just 10 years ago, and the impact of these changes has given birth to what we generally refer to today as work life. Consider these facts. In 55% of families, women earn more than half the household income. In one in five families, since no male is present, women are the sole support. And most married women are now employed, with an increase of 37% to 61% in a short period of time. In response to these dramatic changes, companies now view implementing effective work-life initiatives as a business imperative. Companies need to distinguish themselves by implementing preventative approaches such as work-life effectiveness. Let's take a look. To best realize work-life effectiveness, employers and employees alike must be able to define what it is, why it matters, and how to achieve it. Work-life means different things to different people, depending on where they are in their lives and career cycles. Today, companies are thinking more strategically about the words they use to describe their work-life initiatives. Vocabulary is very important, as are labels especially in an evolving field like work-life effectiveness. The words we use shape our thoughts, and there are opportunities for misunderstanding when we're talking about work-life. So for the purposes of our discussion, we'll use the definition we talked about earlier. Work-life effectiveness is a specific set of organizational practices, policies, and programs, along with a philosophy that recommends aggressive support for the efforts of everyone who works to achieve both success at work and at home. How an organization defines work life depends on its culture, leadership, and in some cases the length of time the organization has had a work life initiative in place. For some organizations, work life is simply a collection of programs, policies, and benefits. In the most progressive organizations, work life has come to represent a culture change effort or practices that include changing work, the way employees are managed, and how productivity is measured. There are at least six important interrelated, business-related reasons why a company should have a comprehensive work-life initiative. These six reasons are why organizations pursue work-life effectiveness. They include attracting and retaining talent, job satisfaction, increased productivity, employee engagement, combating burnout, and reducing healthcare costs. For many organizations, the main reason for work-life initiatives is to attract and hold on to talented people. In surveys and focus groups, employees frequently report that they've considered looking for other jobs because their companies are not supportive of their work and personal needs. Work-life initiatives have given organizations a human face that can help prospective employees tell one corporate face from another. The second reason to actively support work-life effectiveness is to raise morale and job satisfaction. Commitment scores of users of flexible work arrangements were higher than those of non-users, especially in relation to effective elements of commitment associated with loyalty, job satisfaction, and recommending the organization as a good place to work. The third reason to implement a work-life initiative is to make the people you have more productive. Organizations that have studied the results of their work-life programs have found that they've reduced absenteeism and increased productivity, which makes sense. People who feel they have more control over how they manage their work and personal lives can focus more intensely on their work. Increased productivity doesn't tell the whole story. Employee commitment and more importantly engagement are becoming increasingly important to organizations. Studies show that work-life effectiveness encourages engagement. Engaged employees are those who are involved in and enthusiastic about and committed to their work and workplace. Burnout can be hard to define, but both employees and their employers feel its effect. Employees who are burned out tend to leave the organization, have less commitment and focus, be depressed, and have a host of other stress-related illnesses. 
organizations implement a work-life initiative to cut the rise in healthcare costs. It's widely believed that a lack of control over one's job can lead to major health problems. Employers are realizing that to get to the root of the healthcare cost problem, they must take a more active role in managing the health of their employees. One way to describe work-life efforts is to separate them into categories according to programs, policies, and benefits, as well as practices. While the following is not an exhaustive list, it provides some examples in each category. Often the intent is to offer something for everyone in terms of work-life programs. While every employee won't use every program, over their careers most employees will make use of some of the following offerings, like career planning, child care assistance, company cafeterias and stores, corporate discounts, educational scholarships or tuition reimbursement, elder care support services, fitness centers, and wellness and prevention programs. The trend among leading organizations is to re-examine and redesign policies and benefits to ensure that they reflect the company's commitment to mutual trust and respect, to treating all employees like responsible adults, and to reducing health care costs while focusing on outcomes and results. In some cases, organizations are examining their time off policies and practices and are allowing employees to take their paid days, personal or emergency, vacation or sick days, for whatever purpose they want without having to present their need, to make a case or to secure permission. This type of paid time off has grown in use and is being found not to only raise morale and save money, but also give employees more control over their time. This helps make employees feel as they're being treated like adults instead of children who have to ask permission for every day off and to present the reasons for someone's approval. Workplace practices and culture are inherently tied together. It's impossible to view one without the other. Enlightened organizations are changing the way work is done in order to better become more efficient and to alter their company cultures. Flexibility is the work-life practice most frequently requested by employees, and major organizations claim to offer it. But for most organizations, this means a policy that says if it's okay with your manager, it's okay to be flexible. Employees are looking for something more. Just as with other undertakings, in order to successfully develop, implement, and manage a work-life initiative, there must be strategy that's aligned with organizational strategy. Following these guiding principles helps you shape that work-life strategy. The employer needs to recognize the strategic value of addressing work and personal life issues. The work environment must support individual work and personal life effectiveness. And finally, the management of work and personal life effectiveness is a responsibility that's shared by both the employer and employee.